Hey everybody, this is Robbie from Guidance from Gratitude, and welcome to the latest episode of our podcast. Today I'm very excited to speak with my friend Wendy Scaife. She is an Akashic Field Therapist as well as Medical Intuitive, and this is the first episode where I'm going to talk about the path that people have taken to step into service. It's something that I find fascinating to talk about with people, um, especially practitioners that I've worked with, to see what was that tipping point where they just knew they had to step in and start doing this work, to share those gifts with the world rather than just using these things for themselves. So I hope that you'll find this informative. Uh, There's a lot of information in this episode, not only about the work that Wendy's doing, but about Akashic field therapy, about what the Akashic records are and how to work with them to change the energy of situations so you can remove that from your record and from your life. Also, we talk about the importance of a daily practice and having that in your life, a way to connect with your guides and gratitude. I hope you enjoy the next half hour or so, getting to know Wendy and learning more about the Akashic Records. Hi, everybody. This is Robbie, and I'm with my friend, Wendy Scaife, who I'm very, very excited about y'all getting to know. Wendy has her her services through her website, healingbodymindspirit.com. And Wendy, thank you so much for being here with me today to talk about your work and how you stepped into service. I think it's something that I find very interesting as I speak with people who are practitioners or going through their spiritual journey, how did you get started? How did, how did you know this was your calling? And I'm really excited to talk to you about that today. Thank you for this opportunity. I appreciate it. I met you through one of my clients who mentioned um, the work that you do with Akashic Field Therapy. And it's just, I, I had a session with you and I know many of my clients did, and all of us have been blown away by the transformations that we were able to achieve through the work that you guided us through. How did you start your spiritual journey? Where, where did that begin in your life? Well, I was fortunate to grow up in a faith community uh, that allowed me as a young child to know that there was something greater uh, than ourselves. And then through the years, various friends would invite me to various events. So I was invited to join them for Reiki training or shaman classes or mystical conferences and the like. So it's been a long journey, uh, but it's been a good one. (laughs) Before you began your spiritual practice, what was your career? What, what were you doing before you stepped into, like I just say, stepped into service? <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, I've always had a passion for kids. I have a master's in special education. So for many years, I taught children who had severe learning disabilities. And that was a great joy. As I was raising my own family, I moved into youth ministry. So I got to do all kinds of amazing things with uh, young people. and. Then from there, I stepped into my next chapter, which is this chapter, (laughs) all kinds of uh, healing modalities. Yeah. So why don't you talk about that for like, what services are you offering? And just, you know, give us an overview of what those are and how you work with people. I started out with uh, Reiki training and I loved doing that, um, flowing that beautiful love and light energy for those who were just needing to have their vibrations boosted. Um, but it's been interesting, as I mentioned, friends have connected me to different healing modalities. And a few years ago, I had a friend invite me to an angel blessing meditation. And I got on an email list. And at a point, I was ready to switch from youth ministry into something else. And I just opened myself to source and said, you know, what is the next? And in my inbox, came this email inviting me to a class as a medical intuitive. I didn't even know what that was, but I felt the energy from that. I'm like, I don't have a clue what this is, but 
it just sounds <laughs> fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> so the class started like the next week and I just signed up and that is a great joy of mine. So medical intuitive is where a person can use a pendulum, use a medical chart, scan for different areas of issues for a person's health. And then after those are identified in an energy session, do attunements, which are like Reiki, but like Reiki on steroids, uh, <laughs> where a person is flowing specific attunements to bring each organ to its most healthy, vibrant state. So every organ has its healthy vibra vibration mm -hmm. state. And so this attunement that happens uh, with this kind of energy healing brings each organ to its great spot. While in that class, I'm like, well, it's great that we can bring energy to the body and, and bless those organs and those systems. But we know that it's what we think and feel that affects the energy of our body. So mm -hmm. how does that get affected? Well, that gets affected through living our life and having different experiences. We might call them trauma. We might just call them a really hard event, but they leave us feeling something that's actually not true to our soul. It's just a feeling that we have in that moment. So mm -hmm. we might feel like we're not very worthy because of the way we were treated at one point in our life. And mm -hmm. then that energy gets depleted and it affects the system of the body that needs to know, Hey, solar plexus, we are worthy. Right? So I ask, well, how do we, how do we help people to go back and just clean up the closet of those pieces of this information that got stuck in there during those past. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. called Akashic Field Therapy. So Akashic Field Therapy is, again, scanning again with a pendulum, with charts of all the possible events that could happen to a person, mm -hmm. identifying the belief system that can evolve from that, the fears that evolve, the mm -hmm. emotional blocks, all of that. And by identifying them and then recognizing, oh, that's just something that happened at that time. And mm -hmm. I, my protectors have me now protected and not wanting that <laughs> to ever happen again. Yes. Uh, we figure out, okay, well, that's not our truth. What is our soul's truth? And then a person rewires, um, actually rewires the neurons because whatever fires together, wires together. So we just rewire the neurons by reading for 21 days, the soul's actual truth. So that's mm -hmm. the process of Akashic Field Therapy. So yeah. medical intuitive, Akashic Field Therapy. Um, I love other things like past life recall, mm -hmm. um, spirit release. I have a big heart for those earthbound souls that don't understand the light. So I love to uh, work with that. And <laughs> my newest endeavor is animal communication. So <laughs> yes. You mentioned the transition from wanting to move out of the, the role of youth pastor into something else. What was that tipping point for you to step into this different type of service? You were already in service. You were already working with people and helping them be on their spiritual journey, but in a different way. So what really was the tipping point to make you go into more of the metaphysical practices? You know, that's not just traditional church or organized religion. Honestly, burnout. Burnout. Don't we all yeah. experience that at some point where we've been doing something for so long and our soul knows, hey, you know, there's more to experience in life than this one thing. Mm -hmm. um, and the body just feels the fatigue, which is really our soul saying, oh, we aren't meeting up with our expectations for our lifetime <laughs> here. And so yeah. the energy gets depleted and we feel out of sorts and we feel the burnout. And so honestly, I went through that, which we say, oh, dark night of the soul, right? And that's where we can like start climbing up the hill going to the next adventure. And so I'm grateful for that. Actually, I'm mm -hmm. grateful. I finally felt weary and tired and could surrender. And that's honestly mm -hmm. what I did. I just said, I don't know what's next. I know I'm too tired from what I've been doing. So what's I'll just be open. And that's when that email came in and yes. I to people all the time. And so many people have similar stories. Like it's when we finally mm -hmm. experienced that <laughs> crushing feeling, you know, I've got to do something different. And then if we just surrender, yes, you know, it comes. 
that's I, that's the word surrender. I know when I decided to step into service, I had to just I I I was in a weekend workshop and by and I went in going, why isn't what I want to do working? You know, this is how I'm what I'm supposed to do. I know it. And, and the 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 teacher just kind of laughed. I was like, yeah, okay, yeah, you'll see. <laughs> and by the end of the weekend, I was like, I have to do this. I don't want to do, but I have to. And I just surrendered and and stepped into what you know, doing readings, which I never wanted to do, and leading workshops, which I never wanted to do. But I was able to do it in a way that I felt comfortable. I found my tribe that supported me through that. And like you said, those things came right when you needed it. That, that email came in. I, that's the same way I feel about the mastermind that, tri- that set me on this whole journey. So, and a message I just keep getting and getting in the cards and my, you know, my message of the day that I share is it's like, just tap into that magic, see that magic, embrace it, let it guide you. To where you're supposed to be and stop resisting <laughs> so, <laughs> i'm glad i'm so glad that that you embraced the magic of that email and stepped into service because you're doing such wonderful things to help people i i know that i'd never done an akashic field therapy session before i'd heard about the akashic records and talked with people about it but the way that you were able to break down the process through the sheets that you gave us and the the exercises you gave us to do every day really worked. And every day it was, it was a different experience. Um, Different things would come up. Sometimes they'd be really great feelings and sometimes it'd be really tough. And, and then when it was that tough day, here's Wendy checking in miraculously knowing, okay, I'm going to check how you doing? <laughs> so that's what another thing I just love about the work I did with you is you weren't alone as you went through it. You were checking in. You knew when somebody would need that support or just that little hi, sending you some love today. And that was just really lovely. So sorry, back to our my my questions here. Um and can what I, was, could what I was, interject to something here? I feel yeah. that I didn't really share what a Kashik field is very clearly when I spoke earlier. And just for your list, yeah. to maybe have a in case they're like, well, what is this Akashic field stuff they're talking about? The word Akasha is an old Sanskrit word that means sky or ether. Basically, everything is energy. All aspects yeah. Our own body or energy, our thoughts are energy, our words are energy, and our story is energy. So when we refer to the Akashic field, we're talking about this energy field that holds our story. And we all have a story, and it's the universal story, but we're all contributing to that. So when a person does a field therapy, that just means they're giving permission for a practitioner to access out of that storyline, those events that affected the soul in a way that's got them wired where their protectors and defenders are like, oh, we don't want to feel that pain anymore. And so they're living not their own soul's life. They're actually living a very guarded, blocked, protected life because that system, that autonomic system of fight or flight, which we need, Mm -hmm. uh, doesn't ever want us to feel that pain again. So it says, Mm -hmm. oh, well, you know, I, I won't take that risk or, or people aren't to be trusted just because we don't want to experience that pain again, but that's not the soul's truth. Right. So we find those things in that storyline that are like, okay, this is, this is where that old thought got tucked in there that doesn't belong. And let's clear it out because all souls are equal to all other souls. Mm -hmm. All souls are a hundred percent worthy. And I don't know that we all know that. Um, no. Our memories are blocked when we come to planet Earth, right? So yes. we've forgotten yes. that we're a hundred percent worthy. So I <laughs> love that this therapy like cleans out all of that old misinformation and reminds us who we are. Absolutely. One thing I love when I talk to my clients about this work, I, I wasn't doing the Akashic field therapy, you know, specifically, but just going back and looking at where 
this belief or thought came in that we're not worthy or deserving or the struggle came in around something because there's usually, you know, when we're triggered, it's for a reason. And it goes back to something we've either experienced in this life or a past life, if you believe in reincarnation and past lives. And, um, and if you can go back and look at that trigger, then you can move past it because you're taking the energy. Like you said, everything is energy. It's an energetic record of everything that's happened to everyone in the universe. So you're able to remove that energy from your storyline so you can be free of it. And it's just, it's really cool practice. And that's something that I've worked with my clients on doing. It's like, where did this come from? Where did this thought that you're not worthy come from? And I know in the work that we did, I've thought about these things, but by doing it in the specific way that you introduced to me in the 21 day process, new insights would come up about things that I never would have. Well, maybe I would have gotten there at some point, but having that focus period of 21 days and really truly working through the process, you know, things came up for me that I never would have put together, you know, limiting beliefs that I had around um, abundance that people, I'd have different people in reading say, oh, you have a limiting belief around abundance. I was like, no, I don't. I want money. I want joy. I want happiness. But then during this process, I was like, oh my gosh, it's something I said way, way, way back in the day that has been way back in and, you know, my thought, I don't want to be like those people. And those people were the ones that had money and wealth. And so in my mind, even though I hadn't consciously thought of that, I had that connection to abundance. And so I was able to work through that in this process. So it's, it's really powerful work. And I love so. that it can, it can bless so many areas of our life. Mm-hmm. For example, I started gaining weight um, a few years ago, just slowly, but gradually gaining these extra pounds. I'm like, what is that? I haven't what I eat. I haven't changed how I exercise. So I did Akashi field therapy for myself specific to that question. Mm -hmm. I found out that this memory of emerged of when I was a little girl, um, about seven, I was sitting on the edge of my mom's bed and she had had her thyroid removed. And so she didn't have the metabolism. And so she had gained a little weight And I just remember sitting there and saying, I love my mom so much. I want to be like her in every way when I grow Mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. That got stuck in my Akashic field, in my subconscious. So I I now have to fulfill that, right? I now have to live that out. So I was gaining the weight. So I could be like my mother in every way when I grew Mm -hmm. up. Um, but that's not my soul's truth. I don't have a thyroid situation going on. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's the moment. I mean, the, yeah. the first day of the 21 days, the weight just fell off. It just began. Mm-hmm. So within three months, 25 pounds was gone. But that's, you know, <laughs> that was stuck in my subconscious. Yeah. But I remember you telling that story and that actually popped up for me during my 21 days thinking like, what was that, that limiting belief that I threw into, into my path. And that's when that came up. It's like, I don't want to be like those people. It was the exact opposite of what you had said. You're like, <laughs> I want to be just like her. And so it brought in something. And for me, I don't want to be like them. And it's, you know, kept me at a distance from abundance in some way. So it's, it's really interesting how that works. And it it can flow over. So relationships is another area Mm -hmm. just to bring awareness for people are like, well, what can you use it for? So healing relationships, because if we've grown Mm -hmm. up with some tough experiences, we might have that wired in that we don't trust others. Mm -hmm. And this clears all that out. So we can, we can have those relationships with people who are trustworthy, right? We have Mm -hmm. healthy relationships with those who are trustworthy Um, and success is another one, as you were mentioning, like abundance, like we are meant, Mm -hmm. all souls are meant to be fully abundant. Absolutely. We're supposed to have all that our heart desires for our highest good. I'm going to put that Mm -hmm. little caveat on there. Like everything that we want to do, everything that we want to have, if it's in alignment with our highest good, Oh my goodness, we're meant to have it. No one's meant to be struggling and 
stuck. Um, I know we talk about soul contracts sometimes, but for me, those are generalities. That's like, I want to learn patience, forgiveness, uh, unconditional love. It's not, oh, I want to suffer in poverty. Like, yes. I just yeah. want to make clear that that's not a thing. <laughs> Don't feel like, oh, well, I must be living out my soul contract. Because yeah. highly likely it's your protectors and defenders that have just kept you from being successful because maybe there's a time when being successful wasn't, didn't feel good. It didn't play out well. Like you maybe mm-hmm. have had the best grades in the class and the teacher was praising on you. And then all the other students just give you a really hard time at recess, right? Exactly. Well, I still want to be successful after that. So this just calls <laughs> all that out of there. You're meant to be yes. successful. You're meant to yes. have great relationships and be healthy in every way. Absolutely. So my next question was, what was, what was a challenge that you faced as you moved into your spiritual practice? Oh, yeah. I had a great <laughs> big encounter with my feeling of lack of worth. Mm, you know, it's yes. really hard to <laughs> it's really hard to get out there and do anything if you don't feel worthy to do anything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I realized, you know, all like 30 years of volunteer youth ministry where I it became a 40 hour a week job. Um, uh-huh. because I'm like, oh, well, I need to, I need to take, take care of those preschoolers. And, oh, what about our high school students? And, oh, we should do mission trips abroad and like more and more and more hoping. I now realize I did not know this at the time, but I now realize that was my cry to be recognized in some way. Oh, look at Wendy. Look, she took those kids on that mission trip. Somebody would say, good job. Good mm-hmm. job. Because I wasn't saying good job to myself because I didn't mm. realize I am a hundred percent worthy and equal to all. Mm. So I had to do some work on myself and come mm-hmm. to my truth. And then I was free to just roll with it. But yeah, trying to overcome, like even to decide, do I charge people for this or do <laughs> I just, <laughs> yeah. or do I do it for free? Like, yes. But I also, with my past life recall work, I have realized I've lived multiple lives as a slave. Mm. So coming in with slave energy that had not mm-hmm. been resolved, um, kind of wired me set up for, Oh, you just do and don't receive. And so yes. I've overcome that. And I love that anything that we heal in a caution field therapy, you have healed it in this lifetime and it won't go with you to other lifetimes. There won't be any karma that says, Oh, you're still trying to learn that piece of patience. And so you keep having that opportunity again, because you will be walking strong in your soul's truth. And so there's no need to keep learning about worth in the next one because you mastered it already. Yes. Yes. I love that. I mean, I had, we've talked about this and I had very similar experiences. I think a lot of people who are resistant to step into the spotlight or or service, it's because in the past they might've been persecuted for it or, you know, and um, I know those thoughts had come into my mind. That's why it was easier and safer for me to produce other people because then I wasn't having to put my voice out there and to share my thoughts and feelings and emotions around this, you know, all of these subjects. So it was much easier for me to let other people do that. Go, oh, I'll just produce your event. So when I went into that mastermind saying, that's what I'm going to do. And they were like, yeah, no, you're not. (laughs) (laughs) So it's like, why? Why? (laughs) That's where I feel comfortable. I'm grateful, Robbie, though, for all the work that you do and and the services. Thank you. (laughs) I mean, I'm grateful that you've done your healing work so that you can offer that to others. That's amazing. Well, the work in progress, (laughs) as we all are, but it's... It's, it's an interesting journey and, you know, one that I'm really trying to, my message lately has just been just open your heart to love and move forward through that. And as you do that, you will know exactly where you're supposed to be in that present moment, not worrying about the future or the past and really trying to see people through that lens of love and light and, um, that's that's what my challenge is right now is working through through that that focus yeah it's an interesting journey for sure and one that we have to work out every day but as you do it becomes easier and easier because you learn the lesson and you're able just to integrate that into your daily life and and something else will come up that that you want to work on and so as long as you're open and willing to do that work it's just it's a 
really cool thing. <laughs> so we talked about a cha- the challenge of like you stepping in. What is, are some of the most rewarding or satisfying things about the work that you do? I love to witness the healing that comes when a soul mm. remembers who they are. And then I love Absolutely. all the follow-up stories saying, oh my gosh, I got the job that I wanted. Or, oh my gosh, I, yeah. my health is now restored. Or um, I have, I'm getting married next month. I just wanted to let you know. Like, I love that. That's a soul that's free. So that's my joy mm-hmm. is witnessing souls getting back to their truth. Yes, I love that. That's beautiful. It is satisfying when you see, and also just, having people realize they can bring in the change and transformation they want when before they just felt stuck and hopeless and seeing that joy and the little stuff. I tell people celebrate every step, every success. And the success is not the end process. I received a, a message from one of my guides named Emmanuel, who, when he first came to me, I asked what, are you here to help me with and it? And he, it was very clear, just a booming word success. And I was like, that's weird because success is the end of the process. And then as I sat and thought about it over the next week or two, I was like, no, find the success in every moment. So it can propel you forward. So it can bring you that energy and joy. So you can just keep moving through and accomplishing your dreams. It's just such an important thing because when you can connect to those successes, it brings you closer to gratitude and gratitude opens your heart and then it connects you with the energy and your spirit guides. It's just all, it's like this big, beautiful unfolding. (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, So speaking kind of of that, what insights do you have that you could share with others that are either looking to step into their own spiritual, you know, service or or practice, um, or even just beginning their spiritual journey? Because not everybody's going to be a practitioner. I I like, you know, thinking like people stepping out on that journey, or if they are becoming practitioners, what advice would you have for those people? The first step is surrender. Just (laughs) take away any expectation as to how it's all supposed to play out, right? Those of us who like to control things, you know, that's a protector in action, right? Kind of keep us safe. So just let that, you know, tell protectors stand down. Just let me do my soul work here. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Um, And I find so important our daily meditations. I know for some that's like a that's a negative word. Like, just like <laughs> I say it's a four letter word. I say meditation. <laughs> right. is, people think of it as a four letter word. <laughs> right. However, because we are all energy, it is vitally important that we feed that energy body with all that it needs to know. And like, Mm -hmm. if we think about the chakra system, for those who are aware of that, or the energy centers of the body, like the root chakra needs to know every day, I am safe and secure. Like my, my soul is in control here. I can bring in source energy. I can bring in my community. I can manifest. I am safe and secure. And the sacral, it needs to know, oh, I can enjoy healthy connections and I'm, I need some time to be creative and joyful in my day. And every chakra has its, its need of nu- nutrients, I would mm-hmm. say. And so it doesn't take long to just every day validate, affirm what your body energetically needs, mm-hmm. and then to wrap it with white light protection so that nobody else's uh, protectors can, can interfere. And then to send source before to like go ahead and just bless the day. We're not alone in this. We have this magnificent powerhouse of energy all around us that desires to uh, bless us. Now it's up to us to open our own conduit to allow yes. that energy to flow, right? It's never going to impose itself upon us, but to open ourselves to allow that energy of safety, security, love, healing power to just flow through 
what a great way to start the day. And it's better than mm-hmm. breakfast. It's better than anything else we can do for ourselves. And don't so then say coffee up, because I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I do make my coffee before I come up and do my, <laughs> actually I lay in bed and do it but, and yeah, then get yeah. my coffee and then come back and continue. <laughs> but, no, but, but no well, I agree. I agree. Uh, would like, I'm glad to just email a couple of the free meditations that I'm, I'm glad to send those out to folks and walk you through it so that you have a, a quick way to just really bless your body, bless your energy field, bless your mind and heart to wrap in protection, to send source forward, to just go ahead and bless your whole day. I'm glad to just help anybody with that. So you can just let me know. Absolutely. You, you mentioned that we have to ask for that. And that's something that's very important for people to know. And we talk about a lot is that we have free will as humans. And so our guides and angels and God, they don't just swoop in and control our lives. We do that ourselves. And so we can put up those blocks and resist and, and deter and look the other way from things we don't want to deal with. And they can't make us look at it. So we have to stop, invite them in to share the, the guidance and wisdom and that light. And that's so we can't. Thing I would invite people to consider too, is to surrender daily meditations and then invite the team your team Mm -hmm. to journey with you. So we all have those angels that picked us out of all the other souls. Mm -hmm. They picked us to walk. We have spirit guides and all kinds of loving energies and entities that desire to bless and through love and light. So call Mm -hmm. your team. So you're not alone. And the last thing I would say is, is read all the books and take all the classes that sound interesting to you. So if something really sparks, that interest and you're like, wow, I, I'm curious about that, then pick it up, read it or sign up for the course and just allow source to navigate with you You'll yeah. end up where you want to be because it's, it's all meant to be for your highest good, right? Absolutely. And that's one thing I love about the my spiritual study group is that people are coming from all different paths and sharing information about all these different things that they're encountering and through their journey. But Wait yeah, but going, going back to the point you were making about read everything, see everything, explore. That's the thing. This journey is supposed to be fun. Embrace it from that point of joy. So you can just like, I just find books and just get them and read them. You can check them out from the library if you don't have the money to, to, to buy them all. But um, take the free workshops. People are offering free workshops all the time. Um, Hay House has a lot of them. Like Wendy said, if there's some area or subject that just you're like perk up a little bit and get a little jolt of energy take it but that's a that's a wonderful wonderful point Wendy thank you so much for this conversation I just love when I get to spend time with you and I'm so grateful that our paths have crossed and I'm excited for people to experience your Akashic Field Therapy sessions. Uh, you can find Wendy at on her website, healingbodymindspirit.com. Again, that's healingbodymindspirit.com. And um, I cannot encourage you enough to do it. It's a wonderful process. I'm going to reach out to her about another one right now, because while we were talking about, about things, all this stuff started coming up that I was like, well, I can't talk about that right now, but I need to. So I'm excited to start my next 21 day session with her very, very soon. Thank you so much for sharing your light with the world. I wish people could see you because you just shine. You're, you're just beaming constantly. And I asked how how you stepped into this and, and why, and it's just that light. You keep mentioning light and you are the epitome of light. And I just thank you for sharing that with, with me in our interactions and with the world as you go through your day. Thank you so much. Thank you for this opportunity. (laughs) I just appreciate you so much. Well, I do you too. And everybody, her website, Wendy's website is healingbodymindspirit.com. Thank you again, Wendy, for being here today. I'm very excited for people to be able to work with you.
Thank you so much for joining us on this third episode of the Guidance from Gratitude podcast. The first two episodes are also available on Spotify and Apple or through my website, guidancefromgratitude.com. Also on my website, you'll find information about the spiritual study group. It's a wonderful place for you to come and be supported through your own personal journey with like-minded people who are also going through and exploring their spiritual journey. If you have any questions about the spiritual study group, please reach out and let me know. I'd love for you to be a part of that. Also, I do offer private readings, the angel sessions and attunements. You can find out about those at guidancefromgratitude.com. But thank you so much for listening. Please share with your friends that you know might be interested in learning about the archangels or different subjects on spirituality. I'd love for y'all to follow the podcast. I will be doing more of these personal interviews of the path to purpose as well as talking about archangels. I think the next one will be about Archangel Raziel with my dear friend Nicole Schoen. Sending love and light to you all. 